Virtual Care 2.0 is on everyone's mind. You can't even begin to explore Virtual Care 2.0 without first considering the importance of the impact of the largest digital health acquisition to date, the $18.5 billion Teladoc Livongo deal. Megan, would love to get your take on that deal's significance, not only for the telemedicine sector, but for the digital health ecosystem generally. It's illustrative of this transition that we're gonna see from telemedicine 1.0 to telemedicine 2.0 that we're already starting to see in many pockets of healthcare. But the 1.0 version being kind of like what you and I are doing, a video chat, um, but in this case, it would be a patient and a provider to do a visit. Um, it's, it's not the most scalable or low cost model um, when you're leveraging kind of that, um, that physician's time. Um, when you talk about the patient's time, it's, it's synchronous, it's live. And in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of that opportunity to connect and see the person and discuss an issue is really important. But I think what Teladoc realized is they wanted to unhinge themselves from purely that model and get into the space that Lavongo is in, which is kind of ongoing chronic condition management, where part of their core competency is really engaging with patients in an ongoing way, not to mention building some scalable components in, right? Like leveraging AI to more readily connect with their members, as well as leveraging additional members of the, of the care team, health coaches, um, and connecting with patients in an asynchronous way. And so that's kind of what we think of when we think of telemedicine 2.0, it's how can we get to this continuous engagement and in a lot of cases, remote monitoring so that we can place that analytics layer on top of that monitoring and elevate things to the care team when they need to be elevated. But otherwise it's really pretty seamlessly integrated into the patient's life. I think there are a lot of different ways that um, these kind of uh, these different platforms are emerging to serve these this demand from consumers to be more accessible on demand and continuous um, in their lives. I mean, th this is the holy grail. We've talked about this, Megan, for a decade. Uh, you know, can we use these technologies to be, as you said, continuous, proactive and, and at the point of intervention? And, and uh, to me, hearing you talk about it and seeing, uh, you know, the tremendous uh, companies and startups that are out there today, it really, uh, it really bodes well for, for this, uh, you know, the future and uh, where we're truly, I think, going to impact uh, everyone's healthcare. So really excited yeah. about it. But let's talk a little bit, coming back to the Teladoc Livongo deal, but what does it mean for the competitive landscape? Will we continue to see some similar roll-ups happening as companies transition to this new virtual care slash telemedicine 2.0? Yeah, in terms of roll-ups, I mean, when we look at the data across the years, if you're a digital health company, you are most likely to be acquired by another digital health company. Um, and sometimes that's because these companies are trying to build more of a platform play where they're trying to acquire assets that are gonna allow them to get into new clinical or therapeutic areas. Sometimes it's more of a merger to kind of gain new customers or geographic reach. Um, but roll-ups um, have definitely been something that we've been seeing for some time. I think in the context of Teladoc and Livongo, um, I heard they don't they don't use the term Teladongo internally. I know we can still use it, um, but uh, you know it, it's interesting because they're kind of positioning themselves as comprehensive care, but there are certainly elements of the model that they may be missing but looking for. You know whether it's on-demand medication delivery. Um, building out kind of the the connected devices that they may plug into. Um, I would expect to see, um, if not acquisitions, certainly more partnerships in that future. And then watching the other platforms that I was mentioning, starting to think about how they're kind of accruing those different um, assets as well. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting uh, M and A future, and and I and you know, knock on wood, hopefully the capital markets remain open. And I think there's, mm -hmm. I think you're right. I'm really, really uh, excited to see where where these uh, combinations, roll ups, and mergers happen.